Hello, this is Alphonse. Welcome to today's session, to this lesson movement sequence movement learning well-being session. Today we have a guest, a special guest, much anticipated by me at least, my brother Stefan. He is visiting me from Austria to come here to Vietnam. Now that the travel restrictions have been lifted, I'm able to see him for the first time in person in two and a half years. My God, what a long time. I'm looking forward to today's session. And we will start in, in lying on the back, actually. Okay, now we still need my brother. He actually is taking a nap. So let's <laughs> stop his nap and do a movement nap. Hello. Um, we are ready. I'm ready to. Jetzt bist du halt auf der Kamera mit der Unterhose, gell? Aber das Gesicht, das hätte man filmen müssen. Ich hab's da am, am kleinen Bildschirm. Okay, so we will start on the back, so please come to lie on your back. Dann lassen wir das einfach so laufen. Okay, so you don't need anything behind the head, looks good, nothing behind the knees, so you could put something behind the knees if it's not comfortable to lie with the legs straight. So this is the starting position, lying on the back in a method of easiness, just with the legs down, the arms long, legs long, everything resting. Um, pretty good. Pretty good if you can do that and then bring your attention to your left leg and yes, See, the toes are moving, <laughs> not a requirement. Actually, you can move your awareness without moving anything. Just you move your awareness inside your body to your leg and start to roll your leg a little bit. So, exactly. So it's a, a tiny, tiny little roll inside. And so this seems to be the easy, the, the, the most available, we could say. Um, move like in a game of chess to roll it that's an internal rotation it's very nice so now that my brother is lying here may I touch your leg mm. so I could like in a partner session I could roll the if I may do so very casually casually I would touch his foot in a place where it makes sense mechanically and in his sense so if I would touch his toe, this would feel a little bit awkward to him and the rolling wouldn't be that good, of course. We can always play a little bit with the toes, with the big toe, like with a baby, that's always nice. But if I want to roll the foot, I need to make a connection with the leg in a, in a place where I am in a mechanically good position to, to pull and roll. And I could roll his leg when I come to his knee. So, there's places I can make a connection to roll or I could take the greater trochanter to roll the leg. So I need to stabilize the pelvis and roll the leg. So that doesn't roll in the beginning, but if I do it a couple of times, then it starts to roll nicely. There it goes. But of course, at home, if you're on your own, you... So th did this change when I roll your leg and then you roll it again or is it the same? It's different. Different. Yes, so maybe it's a little bit more available. It's always nice to have a helping hand. And then also, yes, you can compare to the right leg. So we will have to do both legs, but do it a little bit with the left leg. That's something you can do casually 
on an afternoon nap or before you fall asleep or maybe as a start into the day in the morning maybe even I prefer to do it at night before I sleep okay so we have the rolling the leg inside and outside as far as it's nice and then the second movement is to bend the left knee to the left okay so that was the first approximation so there it is it's bent but that's not what we are looking for we're not looking for the end position but for the movement so start again with the rolling to the outside and once it doesn't roll anymore start to bend the knee yes the knee bends to the left to the left very nice yes just a small movement and then when it doesn't bend that much anymore take a short break so you notice the foot is dragged upwards towards the pelvis and then think about your heel maybe and push your heel downwards like you would push the heel to extend your leg and there it is or you could think of your knee to roll the leg movement number one to bend the leg bend the knee to the side and then to push the foot down and then it comes to rest and it's in the end position of the movement and not in the habitual place where you would place your leg so instead of fully bending it this is the new instruction roll the leg bend the knee and then suddenly stop after half of the way here for example yes just stop and let go just drop yes so you, you, you drop you drop where you have. it's like stopping on the way on an outlook look at the landscape how does it feel where can you let go of tension and then continue with the movement by bending the knee a little bit more and stop again and when you stop let go and then extend the leg a little bit and stop yes a little bit and stop and see where can you let go where did you have tension that you don't need that you can let go and then move again a little bit yeah. so bend more or bend less extend the extend the leg and stop and see yes you see where your pelvis is twisted a little bit rolled where the movement goes connects to your chest to your neck even and then extend your left leg more and let go uh -huh. and extend your left leg fully and let go and maybe try to do this again to roll it a bit and move a bit and then stop and see when you stop and you let yourself fall yes and then move again a little so you bring tension it's like rigging a sail on a boat before you move you can feel your muscles your tendons ten tensing up bringing tension into your structure before the movement happens then it moves a little bit and then you stop again and let go yes and so you observe yourself you have a inroad you have a something a handle where you can observe yourself you observe yourself in starting to become more tense then you observe yourself in movement and then you let go and you observe yourself letting go and maybe your jaw can relax your tongue can relax your, the nose becomes softer the air can fall inside to the chest yes and we always keep moving we take short breaks to observe this transition from movement to resting and from resting to movement it's the transition to be aware of to become aware of to stay very mindful we are our attention is drawn to to our movement to ourselves okay so maybe try the same thing with your right leg So that's internal rotation and also see if you can rotate your leg to the outside yes so how much tension do you actually need in your ankle or in your toes if you, maybe you can just bend your knee and have your foot like fully relaxed like a sponge or a towel just hanging from your the end 
the far end of your <laughs> lower leg. Yes, and when you extend the leg, try to keep the knee close to the ground. So there's no need to lift the knee when you extend it. Or is it? Is there a need? Yeah, and you observe the pathway, is your leg closer to the midline? And of course there's things you observe with your chest, with your arms, like the whole, whole body is under inspection. <laughs> How is your whole self affected by this movement of bringing tension in your body and letting go? Tension, letting go, tension, it's almost like progressive relaxation. But in movement. So we have actual movement, not just isometric contraction. And with actual movement, we of course have all these connections through the body. I find it highly interesting. Okay, and then extend the leg. that might feel different now, how you rest now already after these few movements. And then bring your attention again to your left leg, roll your leg, movement number one, bend the knee, movement number two. Yes. Try it again, see if you can, can do it with less effort. Yes. Like it's like as if you would do this movement almost for the first time and see what would be. Yes, like this. Okay. And then we had a third movement, which is to lift the knee and stand the foot. So you would tilt it up. Exactly. So this is the movement we have had in the last lesson, just for a review. But we will not do this movement. So bring the knee back to the, to the floor. Yes. Okay. And... Instead of this movement, we keep the knee on the floor, keep the left knee on the floor, and instead of lifting the knee, try to lift your foot. <laughs> so keep the left knee close to the floor, and if your left knee doesn't connect to the floor, you could put a pillow. You could put a pillow uh, under your knee, in between the knee and the floor. So you can press the knee down to the floor and try to lift the foot off the floor. Is this an impossible movement? Maybe. <laughs> but for me it's a logical progression of the, of the last one. Not only a variation, but this is a very strong external rotation, very unusual situation for external rotation, for looking at this movement of external rotation of the hip joint. Yeah, so you might help with your right leg. Um, there's a, I think, a yoga position where you have the, the foot on the thigh and the knee on the floor. So that kind of works for some people. And so I think it's not that much of an impossible movement to lift the foot. But it is for me, it is challenging for my brother. Maybe it is also challenging for you. But it, you see, it works a little bit. You can actually lift it one or two centimeters. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Better than I, I can do it. Okay, then extend the leg and just take, yes, take a short rest. After this strong extends, ex, uh, ex, external rotation of the leg. Feel, may, might feel a little bit strange now, your hip joint, or, or like unusual. Unusual movement, unusual feeling. Uh, try with your right leg also. So 
roll the leg, bend the knee, find the end position of the knee, rest your right knee on the floor and then instead of lifting the knee, press the knee to the floor and try to lift your right foot, a like contortion. And where do you find this kind of movement on YouTube? I think we have like a unique thing here going on. I'm very happy for this, that I can introduce you these kind of ideas. Yeah, pretty good. So how does this feel like? Did you feel like you achieved something? It's interesting. Hmm, interesting. Everything working together. Hmm, everything is working together. Yes, so you're trying to employ your whole self to make this movement possible. And why shouldn't you? Okay, now we try to improve this movement by not grinding down on this movement, but doing something completely else and then see what can we do to improve this movement. So please turn around onto your front side, come to rest onto your belly. So uh, you have your head turned, you choose to turn it to the left. Uh, okay, you turn it to the right, but maybe turn to the left felt a little bit easier, more natural. I don't know, how is it? Uh, both, both sides are okay. So if you can turn your head a little bit to one side and do that. And then bring your attention to your left leg and start to roll your left leg again. And when you're on your belly, that, that feels like a different movement, strangely, even though it's the same leg, it's the same person, but it might feel quite different. And actually, when you're on your belly, if you would put your left hand on your left trochanter, you could feel the, you could feel here the this is the left row hunter, this is the right row hunter. You, if you put your hands here, you can actually feel this bone moving and rotating. It's like an edge before the, the femur becomes the hip sock, goes into the hip socket to the hip joint. There's like this edge, the greater row hunter, and you can feel that like a door handle moving when you're rolling the leg, when you're lying on your front side. Okay, first movement, to roll the leg. Second movement, to bend the left knee to the left, so on the floor this time. So you draw up the left knee on the floor, you keep your left foot on the floor. Yes, very nice. Okay, so it's bent. Very similar movement like you're on the, like before when you were on your back, but now it feels quite different because you're on your front. So do this a couple of times, times to roll your leg and then turn this rotation, this rolling into a bending to bend your knee up to the, to the side. Yes, and take stops in between. Take a rest, you let go, you see. How do you fall? So you're already lying on your front side, but you move. You, from resting, you bring tension into your body, you move, and then when you stop moving, you almost fall. But of course, it's a very safe situation. Okay, when you, the next time your knee is bent, keep, let, it, let it be bent on the floor. So the end position of the movement, first movement roll, second movement bend. And then when your left knee is bent, so roll your leg, bend your knee, keep your left knee bent. Okay, then bring your attention to your left knee, the left knee that is resting on the floor and 
lift your foot off the floor. Oh yeah. <laughs> that kind of works. It's nice. It's an internal rotation. Yes. Okay, and try that from different angles. So, yes, different angles of the knee, how much your knee is bent, but also where you place your left knee. So you can draw your left knee further up or extend your leg a little bit more down and see how does the position of your leg influence the lifting of your left foot. If you have your left foot close to the midline, almost touching your right knee. So you see it's not quite a muscle training, but it's a movement exploration. It's almost like a like an airplane before you take off, you have to go through a checklist and we're trying like a whole lot of movements in a very systematical way. But I don't want to burden you with like too detailed instructions. So I give you a lot of freedom just to try. I give you, of course, you always have the freedom. I just make movement suggestions. Speaking of suggestions, so uh, relax, uh, not relax, keep your knee bent but yes, just lie there with your left knee bent and instead of lifting the whole foot, only lift your heel. So keep your toes in touch with the floor. Yes, so this is a movement. Just to lift the heel, slowly lift the heel and bring it back down again. Or let it drop to the floor. Or instead of lifting the heel, try to lift your forefoot. Yes, and how is lifting the toes of the floor different from bending the ankle? So try to bend and extend the ankle, which is, and keep the big toe in contact with the floor. So keep the, keep the toes on the floor and just, and keep your whole foot on the floor and just bend and extend so you have to find this movement, yes? So this is bend. A and that's so interesting because you cannot see your foot. You have to do everything through sensing and feeling. A and that's also one of the great things of this kind of learning because that's something we don't get much chance in our everyday life to explore the movements of the foot without looking at the foot. So we have lifting the heel, lowering the heel, lifting the forefoot, lowering the forefoot, bending and extending the ankle and all variations thereof. So you can make circles. And, and again, I, I don't want to make it too systematically. I'm just suggesting you, yes, the, the, the basic movements and then please play with that and see what movements do you do and also have in your mind what movements do you avoid? What's your blind spots? How, how can you fill the blanks on the map. And as you might already feel, this lesson is not a muscle, so much of a muscle training, but you start to be much more aware of your leg. You're, you're drawing your attention to your leg in, in such a detailed uh, manner that, that you become, that your whole self <laughs> becomes more complete by being in your leg. So I just had an idea, a question. How would, this how would it be to leave the foot on the floor but to lift the left knee? So that, ah, okay. So this would be more like a crawling situation or creeping situation. Okay, but okay, so. <laughs> and then extend your left, extend your, but that's also something, but this would lead into a different lesson. I think so. So extend your left leg, rest your left leg. So that's interesting how it looks like a different leg almost to me. How, how do you feel your, 
you rest your left leg. Do you feel like more aware of your left leg? Yes, more like there's more more room. It's, uh, lo looser. It feels looser. So let's. More free. Are you still okay on your front side? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we have no, we don't roll back onto the back. Or maybe we should, maybe we should. Come, so roll back onto your back and just compare how it is to lie on your back. If, if your left leg feels, if you feel a difference from your left leg to your right leg. It feels more relaxed, more connected with the ground. More relaxed, more connected with the ground. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then compare this movement to roll the leg, bend the leg. Yes. So we're working more on the ability to feel and sense than on the ability to perform a certain movement here. Because when you do this, when you do the last movement, uh, re return to this, to when the knee is bent and you press the... So first of all, how is your knee lying now? How do you feel like the, the leg is hanging to the side? How is it connected to the rest of your, your body? And then when you start into this movement of trying to lift your left foot off the floor, so maybe you're much more aware of the ingredients, of the different parts of this movement or the different parts of the leg in this very crazy external rotation kind of setup requirement. Okay, so um, what is left to do is the right leg, so please return onto your front side. Yes, maybe turn the head to the right and to make that more comfortable, bring the right arm up, so the hand, the right hand close to the face and the left arm downwards. So the right shoulder is a little bit lifted from the floor that might feel better or we could support the the shoulder maybe with a with a little a little thing here and then bring your attention to your right leg and start to roll the right leg Mm -hmm. Slowly, slowly, slowly. So you roll or you roll and let go, you drop, you roll and drop, roll, drop, and what, what's the rules for <laughs> in fire? What is it? Fire, roll, drop, yes, and rest. Or, so you have this rotation of the leg and once it doesn't roll anymore, start to bend your right knee to the outside. So you, it's an external rotation and from that you start to bend. Yes, return. So extend your leg again and try to make it a smooth transition. So it's a rolling and a bending. And you fuse these two movements into one. Yes, try again. So what do you have to think of? Do you have to think of your foot or your knee or your pelvis or maybe your arm, maybe you're pushing the floor with your elbow. So you could try stand your right stand your right hand in a push-up position, yes, and try to push a little bit while you roll and bend the knee. So maybe this movement of the shoulder helps your your leg to roll and your knee to bend on this side. Or think of your nose, once you start this movement, to bring your nose closer to your knee. So you so bend your neck to look down to your knee underneath this little bridge 
of your arm, yes, just to make this movement of rolling your leg and bending your knee, bring everything together in a, in a whole body movement. Just an auxiliary movement for my brother in this situation to make it easier because this is his probably more stable side and the stable side doesn't fold so easily because it's stable. But to invite it to make this movement of rolling the leg and bending the knee smoother, we introduce this little auxiliary movement. Yes, and then rest your arm and take a short breathing. Wait a little bit until you relax again to the floor and then you pick up the movement with very slowly rolling, rolling a little bit, rolling a little bit and see maybe you bend the knee and then you start to bend the knee alongside on the floor, take a rest there, yes, and then turn and keep your, keep your foot relaxed. Move this and then you bend the knee. You explore the rolling, the bending, easy to the side and then all the movements we had in, in the last, well, with the other leg. So lifting the heel or lifting the toes or lifting the full foot to bring the foot closer to the ceiling to bend the knee more or less. So there's, I don't know how many thousand configurations, angles, and we go through a couple of them and see what's easy, what's pleasant, what comes easy to you. And from there you start to explore, okay, so I, this is area I know. And if you go, if you divert from what you know, you will start to fill in your, your blank spots, the, the things you usually don't do. And that's what we're interested in. And that's why we don't have to remember all the movements, because if we memorize a sequence like this, then where's the surprise? And we need the surprise, we need the uncommon, the, the things we don't know, the things we have a chance to explore and to, um, to work with. Once we know them. what is smooth, where are edges in the movement, what is jerky, in which movements are you holding your breath. Oh, that's an interesting one. So you have your right hand on your thigh from underneath. So that's interesting. So why not try to grab your right foot with your right hand underneath your... <laughs> mm. And then extend again.
but again, this would lead us into a different pattern. Now, after all these movements and the explorations with your right leg, turn over onto your back again and take a rest or have a look how it is to lie on your back. A last time in this session to lie on your back. Feel how it is now to be on your back, how your legs are aligned, connected, how aware you are of your legs and feet and, and all, that, all that, all those things. And you could try the movements of the last lesson, which were very similar to roll a leg, to bend a knee, to stand a foot. Yes, or to stand the other one as well, or to help with one foot, to stand the other foot. Yes, just the movements we did yesterday with Marian. or the movements when you have done the previous lesson, the fancy leg movements video. Yes, exactly. So you will push the floor with the right foot to help to jumpstart the movement of your left leg. Okay, and then just take a last rest, enjoy how you are being instead of doing, just be on your back. And as always, there is one last thing to do, which is to come up to standing and face the world in standing and see how you feel in standing. Is it straight? Okay. Are you straight? How do you feel? Yeah, it feels more free like everything is more flexible and and free to move mm. yes it's not easy it's to loose. put it in, yeah. into words huh? yeah, but, it's but not so easy it, it 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 feels like like you know the whole joints are li like a little bit disconnected a little bit disconnected. yeah just they're, they're like free in in their it may unusual the unusual Unusually loose, but loose, yet not yeah. disconnected because you can. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm connected. It's all there. <laughs> of course, we need to say this. We are connected. <laughs> Everything is connected. <laughs> Everything is connected. It's a holistic detective agency here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I hope this was interesting uh, for you as much as it was for me for teaching and maybe for you for. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yes. And always. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.